I just think it's really, really hard to imagine what it's like living in the company of somebody so intensely affected by this. Yes, I think it's, it's very often you know, we look at the person, the poor person that's the victim of this, but it, very often for the, for the family, you know, you're treading on eggshells throughout the whole time. You know, how will Saren react to this? What's going to happen now? Can we go out? I mean, we, can we go out for the day? Mm. And, and it's just all of those things, you know, and I think from a relationship point of view, it, it puts huge pressures on huge the pressures. whole family. I mean, on your marriage. To, on the marriage, yes. yes. Fair to say it's hell. It, it's a living hell, actually. In, you know, when those pressures are on you, and in our situation, uh, I was the trusted one. My wife was not the trusted one, and that also affected our relationship. And why was as well. that, Saren? Why did you turn to, to to your dad more than mum? I think certain people understand OCD better than others, and I think it just really clicked with you, didn't it, Dad? Whereas I think Mum found it a bit more difficult to understand. So because I didn't really have to speak or even say anything and Dad would know exactly what it was that was bothering me, so it became him that became really involved in all of my rituals. Mm. You're 23 now. You yeah. were 18 when you were diagnosed. But how long do you think you were suffering with OCD? Well, I think when I was about seven, I remember it used to take us ages to leave the house. I used to jump in and out of the doorways. I've had varying different types of OCD. Mm. Um, and I was so worried that my parents would die if I didn't go in and out this doorway that I felt that I was responsible for keeping them alive. And did As you a... tell them that at the time? Eventually it came out, but that was a huge responsibility for a seven-year-old mm. to bear on their shoulders. And then when I think I, st I spoke to you about it, you explained to me that that isn't how it works and I don't need to do those things in order to keep them safe. Um, so that was a real turning point when I was younger and then it got a lot worse when I became 18. Let me ask you this. Um, this is a condition which has a spectrum, right? Mm. And there are people on different parts of that spectrum. But what is obvious to me over the course of a number of years talking about this is that people on that spectrum are often not very united. They don't see themselves as the same. What way would you like OCD talked about or referred to? Well, I think Yes, there is a spectrum. I think a lot of people have tendencies and personality traits where they like things to be a certain way or they have to order things in a certain way and that makes them feel happy. But I think that's a preference as opposed to a demand. So when you've got severe OCD, you absolutely have to do it. Otherwise, the world is going to cave in. This man beside you, he strikes me as more than a daddy, that he's also a teacher and a mentor and someone who explains things. And he was explaining things to me there and you were talking about having a preference to do something, wanting something done on a certain order. And Dennis, you said, for instance, if you go to the petrol station, a lot of people have this situation. Ex explain to us what you were talking about there. Well, so if you, well, we were talking about this. If you perhaps trying to put fuel in, you think, well, I've gone over £10 or whatever else it is and you're at £10.50, well, I'll go up to £11, the next even number. Well, actually, what's the consequences of you stopping at £10.53? Well, and, and that's the process that we went through with Sarah. And so what happens? So if you do this, so what's the worst that could happen? And, and then you go through the whole sort of process. Well, so if you did that, so what would happen? And then nothing happens. And isn't the whole theory blown out of... Yeah. Out of the, out of the it, it is to us because it's yeah. logic, isn't yeah. it? But when yeah. you said it's so severe, um, you said there that, that um, we saw you checking everything. Mm. There's also it's two, one of the types of OCD is contamination. So yeah. we saw you there washing your hands, washing your hands, washing your hands. So everything is about cleanliness. What is it about cleanliness? What do you think will happen if you don't wash your hands or you don't keep everything spotless and clean? I think there's um, a concept of magical thinking, which is where if I touch the sofa, which I think might be unclean, and then I touch my trousers, I take my trousers off they go in my laundry basket everything in my laundry basket is then dirty then I, I brush past the laundry basket and then that's on that and I sit on my sofa at home and it just goes on and on and on until everything in your world is suddenly dirty mm. and I think then you have a clean world and a dirty world and it's about protecting those two things and is that is that what you refer to you know, now that you've got your husband you've got the man of your dreams but you also have to have what is termed your clean space mm. how do you reconcile the both well he's very good in a sense that he doesn't enable my OCD he understands that that's not a good way to live and that having a clean space is essentially what's going to perpetuate my illness and it's going to keep me thinking that I need to do it so he is very respectful he's always asked oh can I just sit here or could we do that or I'm just gonna go and do this and he checks 
bless him, he checks through <laughs> everything with me to make sure that we can manage it. But he's so good and so encouraging and not enabling. He doesn't help me do my And Sarah, finally, what is your message to anyone else watching who either suspects they've got this or who clinically knows that they have this? I think for anyone who suspects they've got it, definitely go to your GP. If you've got someone you trust, like my dad or your partner, that can go with you, that's really helpful because they can explain it to them as well. And anyone that does have it, just keep going. You can do it, but you've got to go towards the fear and not away from it. You've got to face it You have to on. confront it, absolutely. Yeah. And you've, you've had therapy to do that, which I know you said, mm. you know, that is something you would go back to if you felt you needed Absolutely. To. I think there's different things in life. You know, it goes up and it goes down. And at the moment, I'm looking at maybe going to have more therapy to tackle the things that I'm facing at the moment.